The Caucasian American who was convicted in the St. James Circuit Court for having intercourse with a 12-year-old girl after she was handed over to him by her father for transactional sex was on Friday sentenced to 17 years and 3 months for his crime. Robert Benoit, 59, who was unanimously declared guilty by a jury comprising five men and two women following their deliberations in March this year, had at the time declared that corruption and racism had a part in his verdict. According to the evidence unveiled in the matter, the incident took place in December 2020, two days before Christmas. According to Benoit, who is a regular visitor to the island, said he was in the community giving out care packages to the people there. The girl's mother said in her evidence that she was responsible for taking care of Benoit's rented home in the area and so would go there to cook and clean for him. She, however, denied knowing what transpired between him and her child. The young girl said that night while she was at his house, she was awakened from sleep by Benoit who was atop her. She said the man had intercourse with her. The following morning, police acting on information showed up at the resident in search of Benoit. When he finally emerged from the dwelling, the young girl told the police that he had been inside trying to hide her. He was subsequently arrested and charged for sex with a person under the age of 16. Sources said that when Benoit heard the verdict, he stood dumbfounded and open mouth. When he regained his composure, Benoit reportedly declared, It's because I'm white before going on a snare corruption campaign. However, according to the prosecution, on the night of December 23rd, Benoit visited the family home. According to the child, she was instructed by her father to spend the night with the then 57-year-old man and bring back the money. She said right after that statement was made to her, Benoit bought her father a bottle of Magnum and left with her. The young girl said that night while she was at his house, she was awakened from her sleep by Benoit, who was on top of her. However, acting on information, the next morning, police went in search of Benoit. When he finally emerged from the dwelling, the young girl told the police that he had been inside trying to hide her. When asked if she was in a relationship with him, she remained silent, but when asked if they had had sex, she nodded her head at which point Binet exclaimed, Oh God, man, and started sweating profusely. He was subsequently arrested and charged for a sex with a person under 16. However, as for the child's father, he was hauled before the family court to answer to child abuse. And the now 14-year-old child is in the custody of the state. I, however, do think that that father needs to go to prison for this. He should spend some time behind bars and sit and think of what he had done to his own child. At 12 years old, you don't even understand life yet. And the people who are supposed to be protecting you is the persons that are pushing you into danger. Where are we going from here? Over in Trinidad and Tobago, a 13-year-old girl was shot to death hours after she went to the police station to report being raped. The teenager Andre Lalan was killed in her bed. The body of her wheelchair-bound uncle, Sylvan Lalan, was found in the living room. They were both t- shot in the head. Andre's father, Eddie, was also shot in the head and neck. When the killers left, Eddie walked to a neighbor's house and went to the health center. Police were notified. The killings were discovered at around 2 a.m. at a house on Old Mara Road in Libertyville. Crime scene police officers retrieved eight 9mm shells and one projectile. Andre and a relative had gone to the Rio Clara police station on Thursday night to report that she had been raped. They returned home around 8.30 p.m. and was later killed. This is an evil one. I don't know what is going on. These demons are unleashed on our children. She was violated and because she complained about it, her life was taken. It's her body, you know. 
and she went to report what happened to her and basically her whole immediate family was taken out sometimes it makes you wonder why sometimes people don't report certain things when they experience it and in other words as well instead of going to the police station if they could have found a way to just deal with it themselves because there will be no time going around for all this to have happened it is very sad she was only 13 years old back in jamaica the police are reporting that investigators assigned to the cyber forensic crime department are now in possession of the access code for the cell phone of Amio Leon Issa, the mother of nine-year-old Gabrielle King who was killed in St. James. The code was sent to the police via her attorney this afternoon after the Constitutional Court upheld a previous court decision that she should hand over the information. Investigators had applied to the court for a production order as part of the probe in the child's murder. The application was granted. However, Leon Issa filed a challenge in the Constitutional Court arguing that the search of her cell phone by the police would breach her rights to privacy. However, in its ruling, the court said the benefits gained from granting the production order far outweigh the breach of privacy of the claimant. Gabriel King was taken out along the Tucker Main Road in St. James under suspicious circumstances on January 13, 2022. Gabriel King was the stepson of Michael Issa Jr. and the step-grandson of retired business executive Michael Issa Sr., both of Brantford. The boy was murdered after the vehicle being driven by his mother, Amiolia Issa, was carjacked. The mother said they pulled her from the car and drove off with Gabriel in the back. Michael Issa Sr. said in a telephone interview Friday as he fought back tears. His mother alerted police and when they found the car, Gabriel was passed and covered in blood. His throat was slashed. I don't understand it. What kind of animal would do such a thing? Gabriel's mother, Amio, explained how she had to slow down to avoid potholes. She was approached by a man who struck her in the face and pulled her from the vehicle before driving off with Gabriel in the back seat. The vehicle was found in Fairfield Estate area of Montego Bay. Issa said his son has a permanent home in Brantford and operates a security business in the Caribbean. He said Gabriel has visited Brantford in the past and the plan was for him to move here permanently to attend school. The plans had been delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. No, he'll never make it, said Issa, who is in Montego Bay with his son and daughter-in-law at the time. Issa at the time said he had reached out to the federal government in hopes that the Canadian officials can follow the investigation. One thing I know is that this little boy's death shook up all of Jamaica. Even Senior Superintendent Vernon Ellis said this is no normal violence. However, on closer investigations of the information that Gabriel's mother gave, it left many questions. And the whole thing seemed a mystery. That's when Gabriel King's mother, Leona Issa, was asked to hand over her cell phone of which she protests and it has been a long haul and court battling trying to get access to her cell phone as it is a thinking of the investigator that her phone would disclose crucial insight into the tragic death of the nine-year-old as it is felt that there's communication that is linked to the child's murder to be had by investigating the phone. However, Leona Issa rejected their claim and think that the police was a bit heartless in trying to get access to her phone to add to their investigation. So basically, the investigation was put on hold because of Leona Issa's unwillingness to assist the authorities. 
even with court order, she is still protested. But now with access granted, how much will they still find out? And it would really be interesting to find out what kind of information they can still get from it. Because it has been some time since the whole incident. Because I'm pretty sure if there was any information on the phone, she would have wiped it clean long ago. But with cyber technology, let's see how much information they can get and how this will turn out in the end.